Okay, folks, so part two of the role of the nephron is all about um, reabsorption. So in the last tutorial, we talked about the role of the Bowman's capsule in filtering out pretty much everything from the blood, all the things that you don't need, but also all the things that you need. And so the role of the pre PCT, the proximal convoluted tubule, is to get back um, the things that you do need. So um, this process is called selective reabsorption. And the kind of things that you obviously need to get back from the filtrate are glucose, amino acids, ions, water. What I've done is I've just enlarged this part of the diagram. Um, here it is. Um, and we can see um, that there is the proximal convoluted tubule. And I've just drawn in one capillary um, and we can see the little arrows um, are indicating that things are being absorbed from the, um, the PCT back into the blood. Things that are needed, glucose, amino acids, ions, water. But the urea stays in the filtrate. So the urea um, travels on its way to eventually going through all of the nephron, which isn't all drawn here, down into the um, collecting duct and then eventually it um, leaves the kidney and gets stored in the um, bladder as urine. So how does this absorption process happen? So what I'll do is I'll just draw a little enlargement of this part of the PCT in the capillary and we'll have a look at some of the adaptations that are happening. Here's the capillary. Um, there we go. And um, here are the cells that make up the wall of the, um, the PCT. So we've got these folded membranes and some microvilli. And you're probably thinking, ah, microvilli. We know what they're for. And I'll just draw one more. And then um, what's happening is um, anything that's inside the filtrate that needs to go back into the blood will go into this cell and then from the cell into the capillary. It's a little bit like the process of the absorption of glucose from the gut, only it's not the gut, but the same kind of concepts apply. So what the first thing we can see is that we've got um, microvilli on the cells of the PCT and um, they're obviously to increase surface area for absorption okay so that's one thing and then also what's interesting is we also have these folds more folds more folding um, on the base of the cells of the PCT so let me just give you some context that would be on the side of the capillary, yeah, and the microvilli are on the side of the filtrate, okay, and they're also to increase surface area. So we've got, um, you know, whenever you have to write about um, absorption in biology, quite often there are going to be adaptations to increase surface area to maximise diff diffusion or s active transport. Um, talking of active transport, um, these cells also have lots and lots of mitochondria um, to provide the energy for active transport. So let's write that down. Many mitochondria to produce ATP from respiration, of course. And one of the things that it gets used for here is for active transport. So let's just think about what is the active transport being used for. Well, I'm going to draw another little um, diagram. Just move that over. Sorry about that. Um, so if this is just uh, enlarge this bit of the membrane now um, so that we can see the detail of the, the membrane itself and see what's embedded in the membrane. So, of course, embedded in the membrane are these transport proteins. Um, and they're carrier proteins, actually, I'm going to specify. Um, they are carrier proteins um, for the active transport 
of all of these things that we were talking about, glucose, um, amino acids, and ions. And of course, water doesn't need a carrier protein. Water can pass through um, the plasma membrane, but it has to have a water potential gradient in place. So if these are being absorbed back into the blood capillary, water will follow by osmosis. So we can write that down as well. Water follows by osmosis. Okay, um, just one more thing to mention. It's to do with these carrier proteins. Obviously, there's going to be a limited number of these carrier proteins. Let's just think about where they are. They're embedded in the, um, the wall of the PCT here. Um, and the absorption of molecules from the capsule into the blood is limited by how many of these um, proteins there are and also how fast the filtrate is travelling through. So if you have a very, very high concentration of glucose, for instance, inside the filtrate here, there possibly won't be enough of these protein channels to um, effectively um, reabsorb all of that glucose. And so what that means is the glucose, because it's not, it's passing through, there's too much of it to be absorbed effectively by these protein channels um, because the protein channels can only absorb, take up one glucose at a time. Then the glucose will stay in the blood and it will travel through the blood and eventually it will leave the kidney in the urine. Okay, that might help you with one of the questions that I've set you.